Hey, what's up guys and before I get started tomorrow, I'll be placing up the other 5 suggestions and you guys will get to vote. So be sure to stay in tune for that guys. So I'm now here with part 2 of what if Naruto was, the king of the curses, Sukuna. Remember to get this to 100 likes as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform, and also guys, don't forget to go ahead and check out the other channels. I have three more, so in total four. Anime King, Anime King 2, and Making 3, and Anime Symbols. So go ahead, check them out, and yeah, enjoy. And don't forget to comment down below and tell me if you're new. I'll be playing talking back to all of you. So yeah, without further ado or wasting any more time, how about we leap right into this brand new episode? Let's begin now, guys. last part that we left off. We started within the alley, within the hidden leaf. An old drunk thought it was a good idea to attack the innocent boy. However, the child was far from innocent and he soon realized that. After the child proceeded to beat the living crap out of him, he then proceeded to turn him into dust with a fire so hot it was just insane. That child was none other than Naruto Uzumaki Naruto Uzumaki was an oddity, born in the hidden leaf, however, most would not depict his attitude as one of a child. He really did not give a damn what people think of him or what they try to do. He is a definition of mess around and find out, as he's shown people that on multiple occasions. He's not someone to mess with, and he would not stand for anyone taking are looking down on him. So yes, he put them in their place without a second thought and that is the kind of person that he was. Soon enough he would be sent to the academy as he did not know if he was actually looking forward to it. We then skip outside the village as there was a woman making her way down. She seemed rather important judging by the fact the creature came up beside her he was completely dark. He was known as Black Zetsu. Him and her seemed to have a lot in common as the both of them wanted to free someone. Yes, Zetsu had someone to free and so she had someone to free as well. How they met was unknown but they had a partnership. Zetsu did not like to take orders but in this situation he was. Whoever this woman was, she was powerful. With that Zetsu left as the woman with the white hair and green eyes glanced up towards the heavens. I will free you master she said speaking to the person that she wanted to free. So with that we skip back to the academy. Well the first day did not go so well as Naruto was placed in the Hokage's office tied up. It seems like he already got into a buttload of trouble. Harrison had to be a little bit rough with him. From day one, Naruto had shown no interest to show any kind of allegiance the way he spoke, showing that he did not even respect the Hokage himself. Something that Harrison did not like as a boy was showing that he was not with the will of fire. Multiple times he had shown that, like he just did not care, and Harrison was trying to set things right, but he warned him if he did this again, he would be kicked out of the academy. When the day finally came, it was time to fully unlock their chakra because majority of the civilian students did not have access over their chakra. However, when Naruto unlocked his, he found himself in a strange area. As a demonic hand was coming out of bars, it was human-like but almost demonic as well. Normal people would have run away but Naruto gripped it unafraid as he tried to pull the person into the light. 
But the next moment, he found himself back in the real world. What he awakened was far from chakra. As it came out so chaotic, every single person passed out. Everyone. The Hokage had to rush the premises as it was sent all over the village. It was so toxic and terrible, giving people nightmares as several collapsed and were taken to the hospital. Some weeks later, the doctors that were specialized in this had no idea whatsoever what this was. They couldn't quite understand what is this. It didn't feel like chakra, but yet it was so much more stronger and deadlier as they couldn't figure it out. However, Naruto found out that he had another ability, something rather wonderful. A strange cleaving technique that he could use to cleave things. The next day when Naruto had to fight Sasuke, he held nothing back. He almost killed Uchiha with two punches as Naruto was a monster in terms of fighting already. As the other kids were afraid to fight him, he situated himself as the number one complete badass in the entire academy. However, he found all of this tedious and boring. So, he went on his nightly spree within the village, and the fools had the guts to attack him. However, once he was done with them, he came across a boy that was using some kind of ink and built on him. It turns out that this person was sent by his master, who has been watching Naruto, who has been making sure that his messes were cleaned up. Naruto was curious in who this was. However, he would meet him in due time, the boy said before vanishing. It was none other than Donzo, of course. As Donzo had kept an eye on the boy, when he found out that the boy had killed someone in merciless cold blood, that piqued his interest. Donzo would make sure that no one caught on to this, and now he had a proposition for the boy. As Naruto was looking forward to doing these kind of missions, they sounded much more fun than what he was doing right now. A lot of time passed and the time finally came for him to graduate. Majority of the students in the class fear him as he's shown that he was not someone to be messed around with on multiple occasions. They fear to fight him, they fear to even go up against him as the thought of that actually terrified them. However, Naruto did not care in the slightest. He had other things that he had to do after all. So with that, when the day came Naruto was taken, Harrison gave him a special test as he had to face an Anvu. To everyone's surprise, Naruto was actually keeping up. The Anvu almost, well, felt pressure into using full force twice. This kid was no joke, he realized, and this was one of the elites of the elites, one of the strongest in the village other than the Hokage, of course. So yes, that was a big surprise. Just how strong was this boy? On his nightly activity after that, Naruto found Iruka and Mizuki clashing within the forest. Turns out that Mizuki stole the scroll of sealing. He thought that Naruto was someone to attack. He even brought up the Kyuubi, thinking that would distract him, but Naruto showed that he was not someone to mess with, as he killed him in merciless blood, beating the living shit out of him until he was nothing but a mess on the ground. Iruka was terrified. Yes, he was literally terrified. As Naruto looked up towards him with a bloody face. So yeah guys, basically as we left off, you guys can switch across the place with yourself. So what do you say we jump right into this brand new episode? Let's begin now guys. We begin this episode at the Hokage's office. Hiruzen had just talked into Naruto. He was rather surprised. After the incident with Mizuki, Harrison wanted to tell Naruto that he was not the Nine Tail Fox. However, it seems like Naruto had already know. The only thing that he said was that he was not stupid, and he also had a big day tomorrow, and he left soon afterwards. However, the one that was most troubled was Aruka. He was now in the office with Harrison. The man was still shaking after what he had saw. As Harrison wanted to get the full detail from him. Mizuki's body had been recovered. Harrison had not seen it himself, however. He heard that it was demolished. Aruka looked up and Harrison saw the look in his eyes. 
He was terrified. Tell me what happened. Hokage-sama, Aruka said, I have been trying to deny this for as long as I could. However, I believe that the fox has more influence over Naruto than any of us thought. Why would you say that here is an axe? Because I saw him, Aruka said. Those terrifying look in his eyes. I know that Mizuki was a traitor. And I was going to bring him in. However, when Naruto arrived, he turned the situation against me by using Naruto as a hostage. But after that, the man's eyes were frantic and moving around. What he did, and the entire time he was laughing and smiling, he ripped his arms off. He gouged into his flesh. Even after Mizuki had died, he kept on beaten and beaten. With a smile on his face, he stomped his head into nothingness. Aruka said frazzled, Never have I seen a child so accepting of death and willing to commit an act of aggression like that. Something is truly wrong with Naruto. Harrison released a heavy sigh as Aruka saw it. You've noticed as well, haven't you? I have noticed signs from day one. The attitude, the bad behavior, the way he carry himself, the way he reacts and acts around new people. Harrison didn't want to believe that. The boy's soul had been tainted by the Nine Tails. No one in this time period actually knew what the tail beasts were. Yes, they were a mass of chakra. No one in Kanoha knew what was their origin or where they came from. Some believed that they were demons, some believed that they were death incarnate. Mass destructions, plagues, chaos. So, the thought of it taking over despite the seal that Minato placed on him. It was truly terrifying. What are you going to do? Aruka asks. Hiruzen swallowed. As he looked up at the men, time skip, as Naruto slid the door open, several individuals turned towards him. When they saw who it was, they returned back to what they were doing. Sasuke had a snarl on his face as he saw Naruto. Throughout the entire time in the academy, Naruto had put him in his place. From that one fight to when Sasuke had challenged him again. Naruto had broke his nose. The moment Sasuke challenged him, Naruto shattered his nose. The next time, he had broke Sasuke's right arm. As Sasuke would not give up, trying to defeat Naruto, but Naruto did not hold back his punches. He delighted in hurting others. That is why they took him off the roster for facing the other students because if they did not, he might end up killing one of the students. And that is something that they could not allow. As Naruto sat down in his usual seat, at the top, simply leaning back, as he frowned, he really hated wearing a shirt. It just feels so uncomfortable. It was like that from day one. As he leaned back in his chair, he didn't really have any friends. However, Naruto did not care because he did not see these students as people. He saw them as cannon father that would die in due time they were all weak and pathetic and he did not care for none of them in the slightest Kiba glanced up towards Naruto as Naruto snapped his gaze towards him stop looking at me he said even the most fearsome by attitude wise because Kiba was always talking a big game looked away Kiba had tried to assert dominance when he saw that Sasuke failed to do so, believing that he could be the one to put Naruto in his place, believing that he had what it takes. That ended with several broken bones and him crying on the ground in pain. Since then, he had stayed away as even Akamaru was scared to go anywhere near Naruto. The dog, 
had sensed a feeling of fear, just like how other animals felt a predator coming towards them when they were the prey. That is what Akamar felt. So he stayed away from Naruto by any means necessary. And Kiba had realized that. His partner was correct. Aruka then finally came in the class. His eyes wander up to the top where he saw Naruto. His gaze immediately turned away. As there was this nervous look that was vanished a moment later. All right, everyone, he said. Today is a very special day for you all. It's been a long time coming, but I am proud of each and every one of you. You have done the best that you can so that you could reach to this level. And this is where you are going to be truly tested, he said to them. This is where you will be put to the test because things are going to get a lot more harder. You will need to be prepared and ready for everything that the world has to throw at you. Things are not going to be easy out there. That is why I want you to listen to your sensei, train hard and protect yourself. I wish you all luck. From now on, we are all comrades in arm. Congratulations, he said, as several of the students clap with smiles on their faces. Tch, pathetic, said Naruto. And he was not talking low. He was talking as loud as he could. However, they decide to skip over that, mostly Aruka. Now, he said, I'm going to call out the teams that you will be placed on. Naruto decided to wait until he heard his name. It reached up to Team 7. Sasuke Uchiha. Several of the girls held their breath, hoping and praying that they would get on Sasuke's team. Sakura Haruno. Sakura squealed in delight as several girls banged their head on the table in absolute rage and sadness. And Naruto Uzumaki. Sakura froze as she instantly sat back down. Her face looked terrified as Aruka noticed that Sakura had never spoken to Naruto before because he scared the living daylight out of her. Maybe it was just that look in his eyes, the way he carried himself, the way he talked. He terrified her. Ino actually looked worried as she looked over towards her friend. Ino wanted to be on a team with Sasuke, but if it meant being on a team with Naruto, she would pass. She was also terrified of him. Majority of them were. There was just something about him that scared them all. And they felt pity for Sakura for being on that team. And also for Sasuke-kun as well. The rest of the teams were called. Team 8, Hinata, Shino and Kiba. Team 9 was still in circulation this year. So Team 10, Ino and Shikamaru and Choji. Once Aruka told him that their sensei would come in a few minutes, he left. Ino made her way over. Are you okay? She asked. Yeah, of course I am, Sakura said. Are you jealous I got in a team with Sasuke-kun and you didn't? No, that's not what I'm talking about. Sakura could see that Ino was serious. It's that guy, Naruto. My father had told me to stay away from him. He's bad news, Sakura. We've heard things around the village about him. Things that he's done to people. He sent several individuals to the hospital. Grown individuals. And they say he do it because he's evil. Sakura glanced over as Naruto was looking through the window. What am I supposed to do? I was placed on this team. I know. I know we have this rivalry and all, but just be careful, okay? As that surprised Sakura, as she could tell that Ina was truly worried about her. Don't worry, she said. I will. With that, she nodded. And don't think that you can touch Sasuke on just because I won't be there. That brought a smile to Sakura's face. You hear that forehead? As they started to argue a bit. However, Team 8 Sensei arrived. 
as Naruto glanced over toward the door to see. A rather voluptuous woman. Dark hair, red eyes. Kurunai glanced up as she felt eyes on her figure. She was surprised as she saw that boy. A look of lust was in his eyes. She would have never expected this from someone of his age group. She was further surprised when he licked his lips. She called for Team 8 and got out of there. Where had she seen him? It then clicked in her head. That was a Naruto Uzumaki. Everyone was talking about. Everyone was saying that he was bad news. She felt sorry for Kakashi. Team 10 came next. As their sensei took them and went away. It was Asuma Saratobe, son of Hirzen. So with that, the remainder of the teams made their way off. Until Team 7 was the only one left in the room. Naruto sat at his desk, his finger tapping on the wood. As his finger started to cause an indentation, he was getting pissed off. 10 minutes passed, 20 minutes passed, 30 minutes passed and he lost it. Both Sakura and Sasuke snapped their head up as Naruto picked up the deck and cheer and threw it. It smashed against the board, destroying it. He then proceeded to kick the door open as he walked out, placing his hands in his pockets as he left. They both looked at each other, sharing the same sentiment. Time skip. As Naruto stood on top of the monument, as a breeze rushed through his hair, as he looked over at the village, sometime he got these dark thoughts in his head. He didn't know why. Maybe it was pure evil or something because he could just imagine a bomb dropping on Konoha. Something so vile that it blew the village's smithereens and the survivors had to fight each other in pure chaos. He didn't know why but that sounded so much fun. Someone arrived next to him. As Naruto glanced over it was a boy with that ink ability. What do you want? said Naruto. Well, I just came to inform you that your sensei might be a bit late. Given that you're here, I see that you were already affected by this. His name is Kakashi Hatsuki, one of the elite Jonins in the village. And he's someone that is constantly late. I'm sure that's not all you came to tell me. So spit it out, said Naruto. My master told me to tell you that the Hokage is going to be watching you even more than before. What you did to Mizuki, the traitor of this village. He has grown suspicious of you in ways that he had tried to deny in the past. However, you brutalized that man. Yeah, that was fun, said Naruto. And why should I care if he's watching me? Moreover, why does your master care? He told me that he would send me on these missions for me to have fun. Something that I can truly test myself against. Strong individuals, but to this day I still haven't gotten one of these missions. What? Doesn't he trust me, said Naruto. He turned around and vanished. With speed that surprised the boy, he appeared in front of him. However, the mass individual did not move in the slightest. As Naruto looked into the eye holes of the mass, You don't fear me. That's good. I hate cowards, said Naruto, as he turned his back and started to walk away. Everything that you desire will happen in due time. You just have to relax for the time being. Don't tell me to relax. I hate that. Don't know why, but I've always hated that. So mind your tongue, said Naruto. The individual said nothing. As he then spoke, I will be in touch. With that, he was gone. Naruto sat down, just relaxing. That is when someone else arrived. This one was different. Silver here, leaning to the side. Face mostly covered up. As he glanced out over the horizon. What a view, he said. Naruto did not answer him though. I was wondering, when would you see it fit to return back 
to the academy so we can talk. So you're him, huh? Yes, I am your the asshole said Nuta Kotnimov, who believes that his time is better than mine. I was told about your little behavior problem. However, if you do become my student, you're gonna have to show your sensei some respect. After all, I am going to be the one to guide you as a teacher and you will be my student. So let's start off fresh. Fresh, huh? You spend, what, three hours away when the others arrive right on time and you expect me to respect you. Look, I don't know who the hell you are, but waste my time. I don't do shit for you. However, because you're the one that's gonna bring us on missions, I guess I can hold myself, said Naruto as he got to his feet and started to walk away. Kakashi said nothing as he simply watched the boy. As Naruto jumped off the monument, Kakashi quickly stepped forward as he looked down. He was rather shocked as Naruto was not holding on to anything at all, he was just falling. However, from this height, he would surely die, but the child did it like he had it under control. Kakashi prepared himself just in case. The boy was actually suicidal. However, he then saw the boy tucked his body and roll. All of Kakashi's instincts told him to jump down and save him, but he watched. The boy smashed down on the ground hard, cracking it under his feet. Kakashi was surprised as the boy straightened himself up and simply started to walk away like nothing just happened. No, that had him shocked. This height was nothing normal and yet he fell and just walked away from it. Kakashi was told about his unusual chakra that he called Curse Energy. With that, he made his way off. Time skip. Naruto sat on the roof, leaned over to the side. Sasuke and Sakura was next to each other. Alright, why don't we start with some introductions? Like your likes, dislikes, hobbies, dreams, and all of that, said Kakashi. How about you go first, Sensei, so we understand? Sakura said. Naruto glanced towards her. What's so hard to understand in that? Are you perhaps stupid or something? What? Of course I'm not stupid. Then why don't you understand? I I just want Sensei to clarify. And I wasn't talking to you, she said. Well, I can't help but comment on something when people are truly stupid. She glared at him. However, he seemed amused. Pathetic, he said as he looked away. Alright, that's enough, said Kakashi. She made a valid point. So let me see. My name is Kakashi Atsuki. My likes, well, you guys are too young to understand. My dislikes, I don't think you guys want to hear that. My dreams and goals, no, those are too intense. So like that. Both Sakura and Sasuke blink. He just said his name, they thought. How about we start with you? Kakashi said looking towards Naruto. Me, huh? Well, that simple. My name, Naruto Uzumaki. None of you would understand my likes or dislikes. Because you're too naive and weak-minded to handle them. My dreams and goals. Well, it's simple. World domination, said Naruto. He then stopped talking. They wonder if he was joking. He did not look amused this time. He's joking, right? Sakura thought to herself. So, that's it, said Kakashi. Yep, that's it. After all, I wonder if you weren't given a file about us before you were notified that you'll be taking this team. So this is nothing but a waste of time. Hey, Pinky, you're next. My name isn't Pinky. I don't care, said Naruto. She glared at him once again. Kakashi nodded for her to continue. My name is Sakura Haruno, she said, looking at Naruto. And my likes, she looked at Sasuke. My dislikes are 
She glared towards Naruto. My dreams and goals for the future are... She squealed as she looked towards Sasuke. <laughs> as I said, pathetic. I'm gonna say it now. One week. What are you talking about Kekashi Axe? One week after we start missions. As Naruto turned his head towards Sakura. You're gonna die. Sakura started to become afraid. As he looked at her with those eyes. The world is a very dangerous place, Pinky. If you know what's good for you, I suggest you quit the force right now. Because those ninjas out there that we're going to be going up against are going to try and kill you. And if the only thing that you want in life is this Uchiha over here, who can't even protect you when you're out there, you're going to die. Well, enough said, said Naruto as he leaned back. Do not listen to him, Sakura, he said. That is what I'm here for. To make sure that you're all protected and safe out there. So do not listen to whatever he just said. Sakura nodded her head even though she felt a lump in her throat. Sasuke went next, as Naruto found his whole interaction amusing. He wanted to kill a certain someone. It would sound intimidating, but it just sounded dumb and stupid. Kakashi then told them about the test tomorrow. So another stupid test. Well, I suggest you be prepared for this one, Kakashi said. Oh, and if I were you, I would not eat anything tomorrow, he said. With that, he vanished away. Tch. Just another boring test, said Naruto. As he simply jumped off the building, surprising the other two. They rushed to look down as they saw him. Flying down towards the ground. He was going to die, Sakura thought. However, he landed on his feet. Surprising the both of them. Given the height of the building and they were on top of the roof. How did he do that? With little to no effort. Time skip. It was a big day. The both of them had arrived at exactly 7. However, now their stomach was grumbling because they were hungry and their sensei was nowhere to be seen. They didn't know what to do. As they waited and waited and waited, Naruto was not even here either. So they were left waiting. This gave Sakura the time that she needed to talk to her crush but... Sasuke was not interested. However, she realized that if she talked to him normally, he would talk back. So, about that Naruto, she said. Sasuke glanced towards her. What about him? I don't really like him that much. I mean, he's a real pain, isn't he? Hmm, <laughs> you're telling me, Sasuke said. Sakura was beaming on the inside. He was talking to her. She just had to talk to him normally and he would respond. So she spoke to him. As they spoke about their dislike of Naruto. Soon enough Sasuke was agreeing with her. Well, a part of him was tremendously jealous. Because it didn't matter what he do. It didn't matter how hard he try or how hard he fight. He always lose to Naruto in the most humiliating and painful way possible. As he realized that it didn't matter what he did he was just... Not stronger than Naruto. And he hated that with all the fiber of his being. He truly hated that. And for now it seems like there was nothing that he could do about it. But he would get stronger. He would get stronger than everyone else after all he had. A dream. A goal that he must fulfill. Kakashi finally arrived. Yo, he said. As he looked around. So Naruto is not here. He's not here, Sensei. He hasn't been here at all, Sakura said. Making sure her Sensei knew that he wasn't here. She was hoping that her Sensei would just kick him off the team. And it would be her and her Sasuke gun. That would be so amazing. However, as Sensei was looking around, not paying attention to what she was saying. Before he could say anything, they heard something as they turned. As they saw Naruto arriving as he was eating something. 
as he tossed the bag away and the cup as well, without any care in the world. Kakashi looked towards him, I thought. I told you not to eat. And you really think I will listen to you? If I'm hungry, I'll eat, said Naruto. So stop wasting time and tell us what is going on here. I didn't sign up to do more boring tests after I became a damn genin. What was the point if that was the case? Well, it seems like someone is really eager, said Kakashi. But you should know. This test is no normal test because if you fail this test, you will be going back to the academy. W what? Sakura said. Even Sasuke looked surprised. After everything they've done, there's a chance that they can go back to the academy. None of them were liking that in the slightest. He pulled out two bells. Your objective today is rather easy. You are to retrieve these bells, he said. If you don't have a bell by the time it's up, you'll get sent back to the academy. But, Sensei, there's only two. Ah, I'm glad you noticed, Sakura. One of us will be going back no matter what, Sasuke said. Exactly, said Kakashi. So, you want to give up now or... A few minutes away from now, Naruto asked. Sakura blinked as she realized he was talking to her. W what? You heard me, said Naruto. I'm not going to repeat myself. I asked if you want to give up now or a few minutes away from now. What a part of that that you don't understand. You're weak. We all know that. And you're just going to hold back this team. If it was up to me, I would be doing solo missions without any of you. Because all of you would just hold me back. However, there's a chance for you to go away, said Naruto. Because as I told you, you're going to die out there. Stop saying that, she said. What, that you're weak? She glared at him. That's enough, said Kakashi. Stop saying that to her. What, the truth? Besides, there's a chance that she wouldn't be my teammate after this day. So why should I care how she feel? I'd never care in the first place, so I don't see the problem, said Naruto. Kakashi gave him a look as he thought that it might cower him down, but Naruto was not affected in the slightest. So can we begin this or not? We're wasting time here, said Naruto. Kakashi turned his gaze towards the others. Alright, he said. You now know what to do. And remember, come at me with the intent to kill. Because if you don't, you won't succeed. Oh, don't worry, said Naruto. But, don't blame me when you're dead. It seems, I'll have to teach you little Jenin. Exactly what my title as a Jonin means, said Kakashi. Jonin Smonin, I don't really care. Let me show you what I'm capable of. Alright, begin, said Kakashi. He believed it would be doing some good to put Naruto in his place by showing him that he was not the strongest. Kakashi stood there as he did not reach for his book right away. He just stood there waiting. The other two vanished leaving Naruto there alone. He grabbed each side of his shirt as he tore it off. A smile came on his face as he glanced up towards the heavens. Finally he said. As his eyes locked on the sensei, I get to have some fun. With that he was gone. Kakashi spun and blocked the first kick. As Naruto smiled and brought his other leg up. Kakashi grabbed it and spin. He threw Naruto into a tree. However, he appeared behind Naruto before he could hit said tree. Raising his hand to chop the boy in the back of the neck. That was until Naruto stopped himself mid-flight. He snapped his hands to the side and stopped himself, using the pressure of the ear. He then dropped down to the ground. He twists on his heel and leap. Kakashi moved out of the way as Naruto's fist tore into the tree, ripping a huge chunk out of it. He threw the splinters towards Kakashi. Kakashi knocked all of them away as Naruto jumped up and drive his knee towards his face. Kakashi slapped it down and grabbed Naruto's leg and yanked him downwards before kicking him into the tree. Naruto flipped as his feet landed on the bark. 
it exploded as he shoot forward, swinging his fist. Kakashi dodged as Naruto landed and twists. He clapped both of his hands together and flipped over Kakashi. In mid-ear, Kakashi snapped his gaze up as he reached. However, Naruto spun his body. He then brought his heel down to crush right through the man's skull. Kakashi braced himself as the ground cracked underneath him. He raised the eyebrow in surprise as he felt the tremors going through his entire body. He knocked Naruto away who flipped several times. As Naruto landed, he wasn't done yet though, as he raised both of his hands. Years of instincts kicked in as Kakashi ducked and twists. The tree that was over to the left was gouged into. Naruto appeared in front of him the moment he looked away and landed a kick that crushed in his face. However, he was gone. The board that he substituted with exploded into a million pieces as Naruto landed on his feet. Up in a tree Kakashi was gazing down. The Hokage had told him about that technique. He could not see it. That was a big problem. However, he could feel it, sensing by the vibrations in the ear. But that would become very useless if he used it on a wide scale and multiple times. For one to have such a technique, it was truly useful, Kakashi thought. He leaped off the tree as Naruto came crashing down in it. A big grin on his face. Where are you going, he said. You said to fight with the intent to kill you. That's what I'm doing. Kakashi flipped back as he landed. He was reducing his power. As he would not use his Sharingan against a Jenin. The moment Naruto landed, he sprinted forward, breaking the ground as he did so. His attacks became faster. Kakashi tried to dodge all of them, but its hits became stronger. Kakashi found himself on the defensive as Naruto fist slammed into his gut. This was real Kakashi. He coughed as he was thrown back. He landed in surprise. He had restricted a lot of his power because... Well, he was fighting a Jenin, but he realized if he kept up this, he would not survive this. This boy was going for the kill. Kakashi twist and dodge as the ground was gouged out. Several ears were torn and twist. As Naruto kept on using that cleaving technique, he jumped up in mid-ear, his eyes glowing ominously as he came down. The ground exploded, but Kakashi was gone. He reappeared behind Naruto as Naruto turned he was gone once again. Naruto turned as he was kicked in the face. His body bounced off the ground several times before. His head smashed into a tree. Cracking said tree. Kakashi wondered if he went a bit too overboard. However, psychotic laughter was what he got. Now that's what I'm talking about. This is fun said Naruto as he got up and engaged a man once again. They fought for 5 minutes straight and the field was decimated from slashes and cuts. Kakashi had no choice but to actually pull out some techniques because Naruto seemed to be reading every single move that he used against him and adapting to them. Yes, he was not going all out as he would not do that on a genin but still. Up in the foliage, Sasuke was shocked. Sasuke knew that he could not go this hard against that man. As he saw how Naruto was putting him on the defensive, Sakura was watching. Even though he's a complete jerk and an asshole, he was pretty strong. That means she would be the one to fail. Naruto was kicked hard in the face. Kakashi reappeared behind him down below as he smashed his fist in Naruto's gut. He then proceeded to slam a kick into his ribs. He appeared. Before Naruto could reach upwards and grab his leg and slammed him down into the ground. Kakashi realized that the child could take a lot more than he was dishing out. He brought his leg down but Naruto grabbed it and twists. Kakashi winced out as Naruto tripped him over. His nails extended as he reached the tear across the man's face. Kakashi ducked right in time though and slapped away his hand. As their fists made contact. Kakashi then grabbed his wrist and pulled him forward before, black handing him away. 
as Naruto crashed hard on the ground, where he stopped as he simply lay there. He realized that he was not getting the upper hand now. He needed to try that out. He failed to do so. Since he did, but this was motivation for him to do it. Closing his eyes, Naruto dived deep into his core as he reached for that familiar feeling of warmth. This time though, he tried to push it to its absolute max, trying to break through the limitations that were set on himself, trying to break through this incomplete that he felt. He found himself in a dark place. The only source of light that he saw was coming from those bars in front of him. They were normal sized bars, fit for an adult. The space between them was slim. Despite the light, strangely enough, he could not see a damn thing inside. Naruto stepped forward as he heard movement inside. I have no idea who the hell you are, but listen up. You're somehow connected to me and connected to my power. So I'm here for that power, said Naruto as he stepped forward. Once again, he saw a hand reaching out as Naruto stepped towards that hand and reached outwards. This time though, Naruto grabbed it. The nails were long and black. They seemed rough, like they could tear through almost anything. Naruto held on to the hand tight as he felt power surging into him, but then it was cut off. As Naruto found himself back in the real world, there was something placed on him, some limiter or something that he could not Access what he truly was. Maybe that is why he felt so incomplete. Naruto frowned as he was unhappy. However, he got what he wanted. But it still felt so incomplete. Kakashi watches Naruto pull himself up. Had enough Kakashi acts. But before he could say another word. A strange thick blue aura. It seemed to be... The essence of chakra but far from it it was so thick that it was hard to see naruto it exploded around him the grass started to die his power spiked into the air with a great force that had kakashi sweating as this was an anomaly he felt his bones inside shaking the power was so dark and tainted Sakura backed away in fear, crawling away to be exact. Sasuke's whole body was shaking as he saw himself in his home as Itachi was slaughtering everyone. It was bringing back memories, flashbacks. Sasuke was trembling in absolute fear. However, the power cut as soon as it came, as Naruto was back on his feet as he spat to the side. He then walked away confusing Kakashi, making his way towards the foliage like nothing just happened. Kakashi was truly confused, not understanding what the hell that was, as Naruto was no longer to be seen. It took Kakashi a moment to regain his bearings as he was finally able to snap out of that sense of fear that he just felt. Back with Naruto, he sat down. He hated this feeling. He felt so incomplete, like a part of him was barred away. And every time he tried to think about it, there was this headache that came. Something was wrong, gravely so, with him. However, throughout this fight, he understood the meaning of the test. As much as he did not care for much things, he wasn't an idiot. It all made sense after he realized what the sensei was trying to do. It was rather easy to figure out. Konoha was all about teamwork and bullshit so there was no question that this would be about teamwork and bullshit. Tch. If he wanted to go out in the world. He's going to have to. The thought of it made him want to puke. As he looked down into his palm. Where the two bells lied. Yes, he had the bells. 
Kakashi was too busy trying to teach him a lesson and he was not focusing. He did not know the full scope of Naruto cleaving ability and it was rather easy to get them. Yes it was. Out on the field, Kakashi reached down in confusion to realize there was nothing there. Moments later, let go of me, Sasuke said as Naruto threw him on the ground. He had an unconscious soccer as he was holding her with one arm. Sasuke looked up at Naruto with a glare. Be quiet before I knock you out as well. As Naruto threw something towards him, he caught it. Sasuke blinked in confusion. What the? Is this the bell? Are you blind? said Naruto. Why are you giving me this? Listen and shut up, said Naruto. In order for us to pass this test, we have to present a teamwork front. This village is all about teamwork and that bullshit, so I have no doubt in my mind that this is what you want to see. So follow my lead. If you don't, I'll hurt you, said Naruto. Sasuke got up with a glare. You think you can, he said. The last time I remember I broke several of your bones as they made their way out towards the field. Time skip. Kakashi had no choice. Hiruzuna gave my directive to pass them, even if they had failed the test. However, Naruto spin some bullshit about wanting to have them as a teammate. It was the worst lie that he's ever heard. But he gave the both of them the bells, saying that he would not go on until they go on as well. Kakashi had no choice. However, Hiruzen was right. As much as he respected Minato as much as Minato was his sensei, something was wrong with Naruto. And Kakashi wanted to help him so he passed them. However, the problem truly started when he passed them. Naruto slammed his headband down on the table. Hiruzen looked up at him. No more, said Naruto. You think I signed up for this bullshit? Lamwich Hiruzen said. Don't tell me that crap. What's the point of becoming a goddamn ninja if you have to do D rank missions? So you can take this and burn it and destroy it for all I care. I'm not doing a single one of those missions again. You're gonna have to kill me, he said. Hiruzen realized that tough love is what Naruto needed. As he got serious, the aura in the office changed. As Naruto was now looking at the man who had fought in all those wars, the man who had gave his all for Kanoha. Enough, he said. I've let you get away with a lot, but... I'm not going to stand here and let you say anything bad about this village or the way we raise our shinobis. You're going to be on Team 7 and you're going to do all these D-Rank missions until I see it fit to promote you up to a higher rank mission. There will be no more complaints, no more barging into my office and threatening me and blackmailing me with your retirement for me to give you something better. You want to play like a shinobi now then fine. This is a direct order from your superior. Do you understand me he said. As Naruto looked at him, the office was quiet. Naruto reached forward and picked up his headband as he tied it on his head. Yes, I do Hokage-sama he said. I apologize. Can I leave now he asked. Hiruzen was shocked by that turnaround, but he did not believe it one bit. As there was this faint look in his eyes before his face changed into one of understanding. Yes, Hiruzen said, as Naruto stepped out the door. Once he was outside, the look on his face changed. He was pissed off, yes, immensely so. But killing that man right there would cause the entire village to attack him at once. They already hate him. 
and he did not believe he would win. However, he has one goal in his mind right now. Something that he was going to do no matter what. He was going to kill Heroes in Saratobi. But not just that. For talking to him like that, he was going to burn Kanoha. Well, maybe he was going to do that in the first place. He never really liked this village. He hated everyone inside. However, this little treatment, it pissed him off. He was trying to keep all the anger inside, but now he might as well go extreme. Not to say what he hasn't been doing it was extreme. But it was time that he start a plot. And he was going to kill Heroes and Saratobi in the most gruesomest way possible. Right before he make him watch, Kanoha burn. As Nurtur grinned happily. His smile was almost demonic. As he walked through the halls, everyone gave him space. As a feeling that resonated from him was nothing normal. For the next two months, there was no complaint. Kakashi was surprised. Not that Nurta attitude changed, but he did not complain about the missions. One bit. Teamwork was going nowhere because the three of them dislike one another. As Nurta was the problem, Whenever it came to teamwork, he was always a problem. Takashi believed that doing a high rank mission would lead them into better teamwork. Well, that is what he believed. So he went to speak to the Hokage about it. Later that night, as Naruto was dreaming, he jumped up. This dream was more realistic. The more he dived into this unknown power, the more. He started to understand more of this dream. He was fighting a man. He was sure that it was him but it was not the him of now. It was almost like he was an adult. He was fighting a man. With brownish hair, there was a red circle in his forehead. He had a goatee and a staff like a crescent moon and a sun. The both of them were fighting. Ripping the earth apart as they did so. But he woke up. He woke up as he got surrounded by several others. But in the dream he was smiling. Enjoying the chaos. He also saw someone far ahead watching him. The person seemed to want to help. But they did not step in. It was a white haired woman. With strange eyes, they looked so captivating they were green. Meanwhile, she didn't know why but she felt a strange sensation. She looked around. Zetsu had brought good news. He had found majority of the teal beasts and where they lie in the Jinjuliki. She was behind the scenes of course. As she was using the Akaski and she was also using Zetsu as well. Because in the end, the only thing that she cared about was freeing her master who has been locked away for so long. Once she did free him, he will return the world to what it was before. That damn man cursed him and locked him away. And then, this time around there would be no one to stop him. No one to do anything against her master's might. It shall be glorious, she thought to herself as her green eyes dance. With utter joy, she couldn't wait. Her master would walk this earth. The rivers would be dyed blood with red. The sounds of screaming could be heard, but then all over. Village burn, mountains destroyed with a single wave. Chaos reign. All of his underlings causing mayhem. She couldn't wait until the world was placed back in that state with her master as the number one champion to rule them all. And this time, no one will stop him. She just had to get to the tail beasts because each of the tail beasts had something that she needed. However, she believed the strongest one. 
that would ensure her master return was with the nine tail hosts he shall be the first one for them to take soon her master would walk this world again and nothing would be able to stop him back at kanoha as naruto sat on his bed someone was at the window naruto watches a person open his window and step inside he slices the person almost lost his head as the lamp was sliced into pieces you saw me the boy with the mask said I did that is why you're not dead he was quiet for a while my master has a job for you is that so said Naruto yes your team will be participating in a mission outside of the village how do you know that my master of ears and eyes everywhere however on this mission there's something that my master would like you to do for him Naruto glanced towards him is it something fun well by your standard yes it is something fun as a grin came on Naruto's face I'm listening but guys be and subscribe right here if you want to see next part and do like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on that bell notification stay posted. Remember, share to all of your friends in your social media platform. And don't forget to go ahead and check out the other channels. Yes, I need a fourth time which I post what I find every single day. Link will be down in the description, so go ahead and check them out. And yeah, enjoy. And don't forget to turn on the bell notification and see exactly when I post. So without further ado, what do you say we jump right there out of here? See you guys soon. Peace, guys.